Hello and welcome to Screwy Loops and today we are premiering the first episode of a brand new series called Before You Ride where we give you everything you need to know about a coaster, who it's suitable for, who may enjoy it, whether it's worth a 100 plus up to 60 or less than 20 minute wait and finally whether it's worth making a trip at all. You're watching Screwy Loops and this is Before You Ride Wicker Man at Alton Towers. So Wicker Man is a wooden coaster built by Great Coasters International, or better known as GCI, which opened in 2018. This is the latest project in the series of secret weapons at Alton Towers, which act as the iconic mainline coasters of the park. These include Nemesis, Oblivion, Galactica 13, The Smiler and now Wicker Man. Sorry old Reese, it doesn't seem like you're quite good enough for the cut. However, despite its secret weapon status, Wicker Man is very much a family coaster. It has a height restriction of 1.2 meters, allowing the opportunity for smaller children to ride this attraction. If you're worried that a younger guest in your group would be afraid of Wicker Man, then we have you covered. There are no large or steep drops, no inversions, and overall it's fairly tame in the force department. What I can say however is that Wicker Man has speed, and this is a common trait for coasters built by GCI. It may only go 43 miles per hour, but GCIs have a tendency to generally feel faster, and Wicker Man is no exception. You'll definitely feel this just before you enter through Big Bob's structure for the first time. It kinda comes out of nowhere. But as I mentioned, Wicker Man is a family coaster at its core, so I wouldn't be expecting Expecting anything on the same level as like El Toro in Six Flags Great Adventure or even Megaphobia in Oakwood. For you complete and utter airtime junkies out there, it definitely has it but in very small doses. Wicker Man isn't designed to be an airtime machine, this coaster has a bigger focus on speed and tight bank turns. There are pops of airtime throughout the layout, most notably the first hill and as you pass through Big Bob himself. These are good moments, however I believe the lap bar can leave very little leeway for these to truly flourish per se, and that's a shame. You'll definitely find stronger airtime on Rita, even the Smiler has stronger moments, but there's enough on Wicker Man to occasionally catch you off guard. But what Wicker Man does really well on the whole is immerse you in the entire experience. As soon as you enter the queue line, you know you're in for a well-themed adventure. First thing you'll notice is obviously the Wicker Man centerpiece. It's a very impressive structure and so cleverly designed. You have a human head on the one side, then the other side you see a ram. But it's so seamlessly constructed, and in my opinion, this is the greatest theming prop on any UK coaster. The queue line offers some great views of the coaster and wicker man structure and does a good job not to fall into cattle pen hell. With its iconic and atmospheric soundtrack composed by Ima Score 2, this is easily amongst my favourite queue lines at a UK park. And trust me, you'll probably be spending a lot of time in it too. As of this video, Wicker Man uses a bag holder in before you do eventually ride, which means your bags will be kept with Alton Tower's staff and in return you are given a wristband to keep on during the ride. After this you enter a pre-show segment which I will not spoil. If you are concerned that this may be too scary, then take my word for it, it's completely fine. If anything, it sets the scene nicely and gives you a deeper insight into the backstory. Think Hex for example. You then enter the station which I must say is exceptionally well themed, quite possibly my favourite station of any UK coaster. The only thing which may be an issue for some people is the fact that you can't opt to queue for the front or back row, so 9 times out of 10 you'll possibly be sitting somewhere in the middle. And Wicker Man is one of those coasters where the back and front of the train offer very different experiences. I personally prefer the front on here, but it's well worth having a few rides to find out what you enjoy most. Something else you should consider is the time of day you want to ride Wicker Man. Like many coasters, Wicker Man genuinely runs faster towards the end of the day of full operation. It's at this time you'll get the best ride in my opinion, so don't write it off from a single morning ride. Make sure to try it out later in the day to unlock its complete potential. If you catch it in the dark, then bonus as it gives a really good night ride. Wicker Man uses GCI's famous Millennium Flyer trains. This means every row acts like an individual car, allowing for the coaster to manoeuvre much tighter transitions than your typical Woody. The design looks amazing too. As much as I do love these trains, the lap bars aren't perfect. As mentioned earlier, they have a tendency to staple. This basically means once it hits a click as you push it down, it ain't moving one bit. And if pushed down too much, you ain't moving one bit either. It's a pain since it can suck all potential airtime out of some really good moments. 
And if you are a bit larger on the waist, then please do be aware that Wickerman unfortunately isn't the most forgiving coaster. I've seen a few people refuse to ride due to its two click requirement. I'd still definitely give it a shot, but do keep that in mind. I've already tapped into what the overall ride experience is like. As mentioned, Wickerman is all about speed. The layout is very low to the ground, it barely gets much height at all, but that is not a bad thing. Aside from one flat turnaround section, Wickerman barely loses momentum and this is what I love most about this coaster. The first drop out of the tunnel is very short but it's the second drop following it which really kicks this coaster off. This is by far my favourite section of Wicker Man. At this point you enter what I call the S-Bend Double Down Sunday Surprise, which is firstly packed full of airtime, then with a teaspoon of g-force around that banking and finally sprinkled with generous amounts of speed. It truly is a fantastic moment. And also did you know, this section in particular was designed by John Wardley himself. Sadly it wasn't contacted during the rest of the layout's design, which does make me wonder how different this coaster would have been if he was. Very interesting. And talking about the rest of the layout, it's pretty much what you would come to expect from a GCI twister of this size. The highlight moments here are definitely the interactions with the impressive Wicker Man structure, offering some great pops of airtime, head chopper and visual effects. There are no real weak points to the layout, the flat turnaround does feel a little pointless, but for the most part GCI and Towers have done a fantastic job keeping it consistent from start to finish. And that's Wicker Man in a nutshell, overall a really great family wooden coaster with some impressive theming and one of the best looking set pieces around. It's definitely a refreshing addition to the UK and I do hope we see more wooden coasters pop up here in the future. So is this coaster worth a 100 plus up to 60 or less than 20 minute wait? Well if you're either in a family group or you are unfamiliar with modern wooden coasters then this may be worth a 100 plus minute wait. However for you more seasoned coaster enthusiasts who have already done several GCIs then I'd say up to 60 minutes would probably be enough. In terms of GCI coasters this doesn't offer a great deal extra to what other GCIs already have done. If you do want to beat the queues, I recommend entering the park around 9.30am and heading straight to Wicker Man as it is one of the early openers. You'll get on it pretty quickly. And finally, is it worth making the visit at all? If you live in the UK then I'd absolutely make the journey, but if you're travelling from outside the UK then I'd add it to a multi-park trip. I won't necessarily make the journey for Wicker Man alone, but if you've yet to do the smaller two then it may be worth considering a one-off trip to Walton Towers. They're both pretty solid coasters. What are your thoughts on Wicker Man at Alton Towers? Comment below, I'd love to know. If you enjoyed this video then please hit that like button, smash subscribe for more content like this and give the bell a flick to keep all up to date. Top left is the latest video, bottom left is a random one and make sure to hit that button over on the right for the ride of your lives. You've been watching Screwy Loops, try a bit.